for more vibrant neighborhoods and better educational opportunities for our city residents. Being able to finally bring this project to fruition and make the International Plaza a reality is a major step in helping to accomplish these goals. This plaza is a fantastic example of what can be done when citizens and government work together for the greater good of the community. I want to thank the members of my administration who were instrumental in making this happen. First, the Department of Recreation and Youth Services uh, leadership, Commissioner Danielle Lyman Torres and her team, as well as Jim Farr, the Director of Markets. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Let's also thank our Commissioner of Environmental Services, Commissioner Norm Jones and his team, the team that made sure that this project came on time and on budget. <laughs> I also want to thank Commissioner Gary Kirkmeyer and his amazing employees at the Department of Neighborhood and Business Development for their hard work. I see, I thought I saw Commissioner Kirkmeyer, yes, and, and Deputy Commissioner as well, and IT Director Albert, Albert Gaithier and his team for the Tech Savvy Geniuses and in information, information Technology. Let's give all of our city team and the people that worked on this project a big round of applause for making it happen. I also want to thank our former commissioner, Bayer Mohammed, who is CEO of Redco, that you'll hear from in a minute. Let's give him a big round of applause. Yeah. Most of all, I want to thank the Ibero-American Action League and the Ibero-American Development Corp for their never-ending commitment to the development of this plaza. They never gave up. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Ida. Thank you to Ibero for your commitment and for making sure that the city stays committed to Clinton Avenue. Let's give them a big round of applause. As I said, we have a long list of people to thank. <laughs> thank. So I would be remiss if I did not give a huge thank you to all of our generous funders, including Empire State Development under the leadership of Governor Cuomo, RGE, Redco. Rura, as well as all the architectural design contractors and vendors. Let's give it up for the men and women that worked on this project. Without all of you, we would not be standing here in this beautiful new space that will benefit our residents in days and months and years to come. And finally, I want to thank the people of Northeast Rochester, the El Camino neighborhood, and the Clinton Avenue corridor. Thank you for your patience your commitment to this project, your spirit, and your love for this community. Thank you for letting, never letting this dream die. With all the turmoil and unrest in our community that we have experienced during the past few months, it is a pleasure to officially see the opening of a space that will serve to bring us all together, to celebrate our differences and embrace what makes us common. I hope that the International Plaza will be a place that you and your families will enjoy for many, many years to come. God bless you all, and let's keep this celebration going. It is my pleasure to introduce someone who has been committed to this project since the very beginning, City Council President Loretta C. Scott. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you all. Good morning. You, those dancers, though, you know what? I, I think I can do that in my mind. <laughs> They're wonderful. Yeah. So I'm very excited to be here today. The mayor said someone who's been committed to this project from, from the beginning. And she did tell you how long ago the beginning was, right? It, that speaks to one of my favorite scriptures, which says, without vision, the people perish. And when you have a vision for something, you can get it done. This is proof of it. This is totally proof of it. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Vice President Willie Lightfoot, um, Northeast District Council Member Mike Patterson, I believe Councilmember Mitch Gruber and Councilmember Malik Evans are here as well. First, I'd like to thank everybody who's worked so hard to bring this plaza to life, including Mayor Warren, of course. 
Commissioner Lyman Torres and the DRIES team, Commissioner Jones and the DES team, and of course our partners at Ibera. This project has been a long time coming. Over the years, the neighborhood organizations, community members, and local leaders have worked tirelessly to bring this space to fruition. You see, a plaza is more than just a shopping center or a place to hold events. A plaza like this becomes the heart and soul of a neighborhood, a place for the community to gather, to laugh, and create new traditions. We all know that this has been an incredibly difficult year for, for the world. Who's ready to see 2020 gone? Yes. <laughs> Families have been staying home and staying safe. Small business owners have had to think outside of the box just to make ends meet. And many of our city's beloved festivals have been postponed due to COVID-19. At the International Plaza, the community will once again be able to come together safely to browse goods from local vendors, to enjoy delicious food, and to celebrate Latinx culture through music and dance. La Marqueta at the International Plaza will give local entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs and small business owners the opportunity to start off in a low risk and low cost setting. I wish the vendors selected for La Marqueta, Hippocamo Children's Books, Ice Dreams, Wilson Produce, Barinka Bakery, and New Generation Meats much success in this new endeavor. Now, more than ever, the community needs a place to unite together. And I cannot wait to see that happen at the International Plaza. Now, it is my pleasure to bring forward my colleague, Mike Patterson, the Northeast District Representative. Thank you, Madam President. Allow me to be brief and to the point. Things don't just happen. It takes commitment and leadership to get things done. Forty years, this area has been a problem. It's not a problem today. It's, a, it's an attribute to this community. Who did it? Mayor Lovely Warren got it done. I invite you to listen closely to what's going on around us. Every now and then you'll hear the sound of construction. That is not an accident. That is the effort and work of Ibero. Ibero gets things done. We are committed to growth and development in the Northeast. If you look around, if you drive around, look past the obvious problems, we're working on those. But look at what's going on around us. We are rebuilding this community one block at a time. We are growing. We are developing. We have always been amazing. Now we're going to show you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council Member Patterson, who is always a frequent uh, shopper at the market. And we expect this to be no different. Now you have two markets, and you have two markets in your district. All right. Thank you to City Council and all of their support. I would now like to invite up Monroe County uh, Executive, I'm sorry, Deputy Executive, Corinda Crossdale. Are you here? Oh, yay. Uh, wonderful. And she will be immediately followed by uh, Legislative Minority Leader Vince Felder. So please welcome them both to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Torres. It's both a pleasure and an honor to be here this morning during uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, as we celebrate the National His Hispanic Heritage Month, I'm excited to join you during this historic moment to witness the opening of the International Plaza, or La, Marca La Marcate. The um, opening today represents a collective pride seen in the Hispanic community which we've no doubt seen over the last 40 years. The diversity that is reflected in La, Mar in La Marcate celebrates the heritage of this historic neighborhood. One of the primary goals of this project is to strengthen the small business community by offering opportunities for entrepreneurs to market new ideas at an affordable rate. 
It's initiatives like this that will continue to strengthen the efforts to improve the lives of our residents. The, the county is committed to doing its part in working with our community providers, organizers, and government partners to continue to develop La Macarte as an attractive place for our entire community to visit. La Macarte fits perfectly in the heart of North Clinton Avenue in close proximity to St. Michael's Church, which serves as a cornerstone for this community. United in faith, we are a strong community that knows no bounds, one that embraces an unwavering commitment to building a Rochester and County that supports and empower, empowers its residents. This morning, on behalf of our County Executive, Adam Bello, I wanted to thank you for the opportunity to be here to celebrate with you and wish you a happy Hispanic Heritage Month. Thank you. Good morning. I've um, become sort of attached to this neighborhood up here. I live around the corner up of Falls Boulevard. There's something about the people and the spirit they ha it's in this community that's really um, magnetic. Um, when you look at this area and you see the challenges that have been here and the things the city has tried to do over the years to, to fix things up, tearing houses down and other things, now, the Bible has a scripture about what Jesus talks about when the evil spirit departs. And if you don't replace it with anything, they come back with more, and they find it nice and swept and clean. So it's not enough to do that. We have to replace that negative with positive stuff. When you look at what happened on this site here, what Ibero is doing with El Pueblo Neblo over there, and the other things that are going on in this neighborhood, it's important because it's, it's changing the perception of this area, and and it's, it's making it now a magnet of the right kind of thing rather than the wrong kind of thing. And it's very, you know, and, and I'm very heartened by that, you know, from dealing over the years with uh, Ida Perez and uh, Ms. Colon and Rudy Rivera and others in this area who are really committed, Miguel, who are really committed to, to ending this harem scourge up here. To be able to see this today and open this up today, it shows that there's a commitment to really make things better. You know, I, I remember talking to Gladys Santiago about this 12, 13 years ago when, when it fell apart the last time. And so I want to call Mike Patterson. First, I want to I thank those in this neighborhood who have stayed, uh, Mr. Burgos, who have remained committed to this for keeping the faith. But then also want to make sure we give credit once again to the mayor because she's the one who said, get it done. And after all, you know, after all these years, you know, of hand wringing and going back and forth and stopping and starting. Now we stand, I'm standing on this stage and looking at this beautiful uh, design right here and looking, this is amazing. And it's a great day for this neighborhood, it's a great day for this city, and it shows that we can turn things around in spite of what we see. And that's very important. And so I'm glad to be here. Uh, thank you all for your, for your patience and your, and your tireless advocacy on behalf of the people in this neighborhood because that's what's going to keep it. The next thing we got to do is make sure we save St. Michael's. All right? All right. Ha have a good day. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those inspirational remarks about the neighborhood and all of the work that has gone in to this plaza. And I hope that uh, our county representatives will help us to promote this location throughout the region um, and throughout our county. So next, it is indeed my pleasure to introduce our representative from Ibero American Action League. Ibero has been a tremendous partner in so many efforts, but today we are addressing this site. Ibero has been our partner at every level of community engagement, awareness, support, and is our formal partner for activation and ongoing stewardship of this flagship neighborhood cornerstone that we have opened up today. So please join me in welcoming Council Member Miguel Melendez, who is Ibero's Chief Community Engagement Officer. Miguel?
Good morning, everyone. Today is an exciting day. This project is a long time in the making, 40 plus years, depending on who you talk to. That is longer than I've been alive. The elders of this community knew a thing or two about community development. Their vision for a project such as this would remind them of home. Pick your Caribbean destination. They all live, they all have villages or towns with a plaza across from a beautiful church. Creating a culturally relevant destination was important for this community. There are too many people to acknowledge, as has already been said many times. In recent decades, former council president Gladys Santiago was a staunch advocate for this project. Daisy Algarin spent many years at City Hall pushing this forward, and the North Clinton Avenue Business Association did not let the idea go away either. The late Father Tracy remained optimistic that this could someday happen for this community. The city, neighbors, and businesses alike dreamed of creating La Placita or La Marqueta. The hope was still alive. In April of 2015, the Ibero-American Development Corporation began to bark, embark on a journey to work with the residents and document a path forward for the El Camino neighborhood. The El Camino revitalization area was coined. And we worked with this community to create a charrette and vision plan. In August of 2016, that plan was released. In that vision, the neighborhood identified this project as a key priority with the idea of considering a phased approach to development. The residents said, in phase one, let's build some infrastructure, build a plaza. In phase two, create a marketplace with pop-up tents and maybe look at shipping containers. What you see here is a hybrid of what the residents envisioned. The point of this, you can draw a straight line from the community vision plan to this project, and that is a testament to the city of Rochester and this community collaborating and coming together. Truly, a community vision realized. <laughs> By the way, there was a phase three, but we can talk about that later. I would like to acknowledge the El Camino Committee and the IEDC staff. There are very specific, specific people who helped implement the most recent vision for this site in alphabetical order. Annette Ramos, Don Bird, Hildred Aponte, Ida Perez, Imani Sanders, Jim Fraser, Kristen Cushman-Smith, Lori Bogmas, Liliana Ruiz, Roberto Burgos, and Rudy Rivera. These individuals put a lot of brain power and sweat equity into this site. I would also like to acknowledge the mayor. Mayor Warren heard everyone loud and clear. We needed to get this done. Inside City Hall, she rigorously championed this project. Every commissioner, every staff member, and all who participated in the construction did a wonderful job. A special thank you to Commissioner Lyman Torres and the International Plaza Planning Team who also put this event together. There was a lot of intense work and a lot of changes in the middle of this design. Everyone found a way. Today I say to all of you, it was well worth your efforts, the community is grateful, and we will work hard to continue our work to make this culturally relevant destination and marketplace of Northeast Rochester with an inclusive international twist, a very successful site. Thank you all. Thank you so, thank you so much, Miguel. We, could, <laughs> we couldn't do this without you. I would now like to take an opportunity to acknowledge that this $3.6 million project that we know was 40 years in the making took a team to get from concept to completion. 
And I would like to begin with acknowledging uh, Bea Muhammad, who served as the Commissioner of Neighborhood and Business Development. He was committed to ensuring the funding was available for this project, for the growth and prosperity of this community's entrepreneurs and small businesses. Please join me in welcoming Bea Muhammad, now CEO of Rochester Economic Development Corporation, to say a few words. Bea? How's everybody doing today? One more time. How's everybody doing today? I know it's a little cold. The last time we were out here doing the, uh, the groundbreaking, it was raining and it was cold. And today it's a little chilly. But I feel warm today and very happy for the success of this. Um, I really want to thank the citizens, the residents, our brothers and sisters in this community that never gave up. When you sign up to work for government, nonprofit, you sign up to be a police officer, a deputy county exec, a mayor, city council, you sign up to serve. It's not about you. You sacrifice a lot. Everyone up here has sacrificed their family, their aspirations and goals to work to serve the community. And that's what everyone here has done basically through their whole career. You don't make a lot of money, but you're here, you get gratitude from serving. Now the mayor pushed us, she pushed me, she has pushed the community to, to get this done. When I first started, I was a commissioner previously, uh, I was meeting with the staff and Daisy came in my office and she said, I just wanna have a conversation with you. And she talked about La Marqueta and then I started meeting with the community. But it really was the mayor pushing us as she has pushed the last seven years. You see all these cranes in the sky? It's because of leadership, and then you have to get a team to execute. And that's what has happened here. But it's all to serve the community. None of this would have happened if the community gave up. So it's our job here. You know, we are uh, prophesizing up here and everything today. But it's our job to make the thing real. So this is just not an exercise today of ribbon cutting. We need to come support. Our businesses in our community have been hit hard by this COVID. They will not survive if we don't take our coins, our nickels, our dimes to support these businesses. Our community will die. But that's not what Rochester is about. Rochester is tough. It's strong and it's resilient. So it's now time, I think we have a market day Sunday at one o'clock. We want to be socially distanced, of course, but come spend your money in the community. I don't have anything against the surrounding areas, but come spend your money where you know local businesses are hiring people, your children, or people that you know. And if you want this community to be better, spend your money. Okay, so there's a lot of people to thank, and I think we all went through it. I just, real quick, architecture, I think, was the uh, designer. Jeff Mozak is back there. Commissioner Jones, I don't know where he is. He's the sharpest man uh, here today. Um, but there's so many people, and I just don't forget, it was because of the leadership that we've had here today through the mayor. And, uh, and, and for me, it's been a blessing to serve as I continue to serve this community. So thank you. Uh, everyone enjoy their day. All right, all right. Don't go too far, Bea. As you already know, I have already requested more investments for the vendors for this site. So we're going to be looking for that to happen, all right? Put you right on the spot right here. Publicly. Thank you, Redco. All right. All right. That is amazing. Um, I would like to acknowledge the hard work led by Commissioner Norman Jones and the DES team. And I would like to call Commissioner Jones up to the podium so that he may very specifically acknowledge, uh, as we have all started to do, the many, many uh, vendors who made this happen, uh, the construction vendors, design corporations that made this happen. So Commissioner Jones, if you would please 
uh, do us the honor of thanking your team and uh, the folks who made this happen. Thank you. Thank you, um, my partner in crime. We, we partnered on so many things, and uh, I, I use the term crime you know, very loosely, but we are together. We do a lot of things uh, uh, for the benefit of the community. And Mayor, after 40 years, you finish this. You're getting this done. You finish a lot of things, Mayor. You're finishing a lot of things. I was here a little less than a year ago with the groundbreaking, and I gave a challenge to a specific contractor. I said to Cummings Construction, Charles Cummings, who's here in the audience, that Charles, that you're going to get this done on time, you're going to get this done on budget, and I said it in front of the, the entire crowd right out here, right at this corner. And Charles, you did it. You did it on time, you did it on budget, and I know it means something special to you because I know your origins are from Panama, and this is so important that we have a minority prime that came here on the avenue and got this thing done. So I just want to give you a special recognition for our hard work and continually provide us quality service for the city of Rochester. Thank you, Charles. I'd be remiss to uh, not, not acknowledge my team at, at City Hall, led by City Engineer Holly Barrett, uh, Jeff Morozik, our Senior Landscape Architect, uh, Andy, I'm going to butcher your name, Wywajik, uh, uh, who is overseeing this. They were here during the pandemic. They were essential staff. They kept going. They didn't stop so that we could make this day a reality. We had many uh, different contractors and consultants that came here, and I don't want to miss any of them, so I'm going to do this cheat sheet. I know I can do it without the cheat sheet, but I want to acknowledge LaBella Associates Architecture, Pastoral Associates, Ravi Engineering, North Coast Electric, MCOR Services, Bethlehem, and Iconic. Thank you for doing a great job here. This is something just, just the beginning, and this is something that we're going to continue to work on because we are all part of this community. And once again, Charlie, thank you for the work that you've done. I appreciate you. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. We also had a core team that met week after week for more than a year just to plan the operations of this project and to engage, educate, and support the community as we considered how the site would work, be assessed, accessed, and attract vendors and customers. You've met Miguel, but I also want to point out Erica Hernandez, who worked as a part of the business development team to tirelessly connect vendors with grants, loans, uh, and just learning about resources to support their dreams. Thank you, Erica. I know our vendors thank you tremendously for your help navigating the piles and piles of paperwork to make this happen for them. Dr. Lomax Campbell and the Mayor's Office of Community Wealth Building supported the development of business plans and getting people ready and encouraged to launch their businesses here. Lillian Ruiz, my Ho, Kelly McBride, and Cindy DeCoste also poured themselves into communications and behind the scenes work, which will go well beyond today's festivities. So thank you on behalf of our community. Last but not least is Mr. Jim Farr. Jim has been key in bringing all of his years of experience in leading the public market to the development and operations of this plaza. Every detail of information he learned from supporting vendors, selecting vendors, and understanding how the kiosks needed to be in order to both sustain high commercial use and our glorious Rochester weather. <laughs> Jim Farr had it all. And I would now like to invite Jim up for a few words about our fall plans and our vendors. Jim? Danielle, let me get this mask off. <laughs> this is a beautiful and peaceful place. You know, yesterday afternoon I was sitting here about 5 o'clock and just looking at the sun shining off the spear of St. Michael's, and it, you know, it just came to me that it, this is such a quiet and hopefully soon busy place, but in a busy neighborhood. But it's also beautiful and special because it marks the culmination as well as the start of a neighborhood dream, a dream that envisions a center of business commu and community right here on North Clinton. 
I'm honored that I was able to play a small part in this transformation. A couple of quick comments about the construction process because you've already heard about, uh, heard a lot about it, but I've been uh, involved in probably literally hundreds of public projects over the years. And I have to say, this is probably the smoothest one that uh, I've been involved with. And I have to call out Charlie again, Charlie Cummings and his whole staff and all these subcontractors on here. Look at the concrete work. Everybody was saying that some of the best concrete work I ever saw. And they, they took pride in every little part of this project. So, but you know, it's, it's when you have neighbors in the community and everyone that has vision for a project like this, it's hard for not the whole team not to get excited and give, up, give their all when they're working on such a positive thing. My hands are so cold I can hardly shift the papers here. But And there's one other special person, and I know you always uh, get yourself in trouble when you start calling out uh, people's names, but I'd really like to thank, Bo thank Bonnie Majestic Trove and give her a nice round of applause. She was here every day. She was our representative on the site, but she was much more than this, too. She really took this project to heart and worked with the neighbors and worked with the community and helped us make this ha happen. So what's ahead for the fall and the winter? Well, we have two great anchor vendors who will be opening this Sunday, and they'll be here every day to serve you. In keeping with the international theme, both of these vendors are immigrants. Jose Benet, I don't know if Jose's here, or Hillary, any of his family. Jose's from Blinkwin Bakery, and they, he actually is from the Dominican Republic, and he came to Rochester, and he always wanted his own business, and he brought, bought Blinkwin from the family that had operated it from, for many years. And he wants to bring that same energy and quality product to the second location, and we're very, very happy to have him here. He's actually, his daughter Hillary, who's 25, is going to be the lead on this location, and he's hoping that Someday there can be a string of Brinkwin bakeries all around th the city and the area. And that would be a great dream. And then we have uh, our new generation meets in Waflik Altawal and his daughter Yermanese, who are originally from Syrian and uh, Syria and they were um, came from Syria. His parents sent him to Romania to go to school to be a doctor. He instead got, fell in love with all the great sausages in Europe and started to learn from some of the folks there how they made these sausages. And when he came to America and started to open some stores and other things here, he brought Hartman's Sausage Shop, which is a, right down the street on Clinton Avenue, and took over the operations there. He's currently a vendor at the public market, but he's going to bring a variety of smoked and fresh sausage and meats to the site as well as develop new, he's anxious to meet with folks and meet with the neighbors and develop new products and new tastes that meet the needs of the community. And then, go ahead and clap, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have our other vendors that are committed in some of the smaller kiosks here, and they'll be here on Sundays this fall when the market's open, and then in the spring, again, we'll have a grand opening and really have this place packed. But we'd like to thank Henry Padron and his partner, Pamela. They have Hippocampa Books, and they're going to be here. They have another outlet on South, a uh, South Avenue. You can go over there. They have uh, children's books and other favorites, um, uh, Spanish and English. Uh, Wilson Produce, they're one of our vendors at the public market. They're uh, really serve uh, the whole community, restaurants and other folks, but they're going to bring specially tropical things here as well as traditional uh, produce to the market. And then I know I see Rick Ramos standing right there. Rick Ramos is famous for his Caribbean flavored Italian ice, and Rick's going to bring that Italian ice here to the site, and we're very excited about that. So again, we have starting this Sunday at 1, we have four market Sundays. So I invite you, as Bea did and everyone else, stop down, experience a little preview of what this plaza will become next spring. It's going to be a community center for all, filled with entrepreneurs and a variety of foods, crafts, and unique items. And also, as Commissioner Torres said, it's also going to be a place where there's entertainment and culture, because we do have our great partners, Ibero, that are helping us with really activating this site. But it's also, more importantly, and, and you know, if you go to the public market a lot, you'll figure, uh, 
uh, especially during these times because people don't have much of a chance to socialize. It's going to be a place to socialize and, and really get together and have very, very uh, diverse uh, community atmosphere. So please come down Sunday. We still have tent spaces available for just $45, $75 for all four Sundays. And you can talk or call the public market. And I'd like to just thank again Cindy and and Rob and, and all the gang at the, uh, Kelly at the market because they took this on on top of trying to keep the public market open during the pandemic and so I really give them a lot of thanks for taking that role. Uh, if you're here today, please help us spread the word and again, thanks and congratulations to all and we have a brand new era for North Clinton Avenue beginning today, so thank you. Thank you, Jim. Plus, please give him another big round of applause for taking on this project as well as the public market. I'm going to ask Councilmember Miguel Melendez to join me. Um, we wouldn't be standing here today if it weren't for the hard work and dedication of many people in this community. But there are three people in particular whose commitment to this project went above and beyond the call of duty that refused to let the plans for this marketplace fall by the wayside. It is only fitting that we pay tribute to the unwavering faith and determination of Gladys Santiago, who was the former president of city council, Eugenio Marlin, and a late father, Lawrence Tracy, who I know is smiling down on us today. Let's please give it up for those three. <laughs> Unfortunately, Gladys was unable to join us today, but her son, Jamie Santiago, is here to accept an honor on behalf of his mother. Jamie, would you please join us? <laughs> Gladys Santiago is a Rochester community activist who served as an executive at Ibi Ibero-American Action League, as well as a member of the president of Rochester City Council. Gladys is an ardent defender of the Latino community and the poor in the city of Rochester, and fiercely kept this project alive at City Hall. So on behalf of the citizens of Rochester, I truly want to thank you for, uh, thank your mother for her many years of commitment. She was here when we broke ground. Make sure you send her pictures and let her know that we got it done for her. Appreciate it. Our next honoree is the late Father Tracy, who, as you all well know, served this community with his whole heart and soul before passing. Accepting the honor for Father Tracy is Rudy Rivera. How you doing, Rudy? <laughs> they called him Padre Lawrence Tracy. He was raised near the corner of Clinton and Clifford Avenues, known as the Barrio Priest of the Catholic Faith. Father Tracy immersed himself in a Latino community as a steady and consistent advocate throughout his life of service. Padre believed in treating everyone with dignity, love, and respect, improving quality of life for all, and advocating for equity in access, services, and opportunities. Thank you for accepting this on behalf of Father Tracy. And finally, I would like to uh, bring up my mentor, one of my mentors, and my boss, Eugenio Marlin. Eugenio, a native of the Dominican Republic, Eugenio has served as a lifelong conduit to improving the Latino community since his arrival in Rochester. As a founding member of the Eugenio Maria de Elstos Charter School, Eugenio has also led the Ibero-American Development Corporation, co-created the El Camino Revitalization Area Vision Plan, 
and developed a total of 154 units of housing in the area through El Camino Estates and Pueblo Nuevo projects. Congratulations. Thank you, Eugenio, and thank you to Rudy, as well as all of our representatives that are here today. I want to tell the community something. Today, we have over $100 million of development going on in the North Clinton Avenue area, and that is because of your commitment to this community, the hard work of people like Eugenio. We have only just begun here, and we are committed to making sure that this community sees that the city of Rochester is committed to them. They said many years ago that, uh, or the Bible says, without a vision, the people will perish. And I want to take a moment to thank um, Council Member Melendez because when we started working together when I was on city council, you came in with Project Hope and you had a vision. We started at the corner of, of, of Clinton and Conkey. We got the park done there. And then it was the housing. And then it was this vision and the housing for Pablo Nuevo. And now we're redoing Don Samuel Torres Park. And so I want to thank you for never giving up and for working in, with the community hand in hand to make sure that the city of Rochester not only saw the residents, but we did what the residents wanted in this neighborhood. Let's give it up again. We have one more surprise in store for you. If Jamie and Eugenio could join me once again. Oh, well, hold on one second. I'm sorry. I'm moving along too fast. I'm turning it over. Back over to you. <laughs> okay, I will make this uh, very brief so we don't leave some suspense out there too long. Um, I just want to acknowledge a couple other things that are in the plaza. So you'll see on some of the light poles, there's storyboards. These storyboards uh, were put together uh, with the help of John Hawk and Christine Radarski, the city historian. And this is part of telling the story of this neighborhood, this international neighborhood that has seen many different cultures uh, arrive here. We anticipate that uh, the complete story is not told and will we'll add and change over time, but this is a great start, so please Go around the plaza before you leave today and have a chance to, to take a moment to read those things. I would also like to acknowledge Jose and Hector. There's a blue chair project. If you're, they're over there setting it up right now. This is actually a photo opportunity. It may not be ready today, but when you come to the plaza on Sunday, please take your picture right in front of the church as your backdrop. It's a great addition to the site as well. And with that, I think I can turn it back over to the mayor. Sorry, one more thing. So on display to my, to my left um, is uh, the, the BRICS project. So we are, uh, you're able to purchase BRICS. Uh, if you go to the cityofrochester.gov slash international plaza, there is a, uh, a form. You can also go to Ibero's website. And these BRICS will be on display um, here uh, along the back wall. Uh, there will be an art display that's added uh, next year. So if you're interested, please check that out, and it's a great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, we have one more surprise in store for you. If Eugenio and Jamie, along with the mayor of Clinton Avenue, Ms. Baylin, I'm going to ask you to come up for us and help us. We're going to unveil... Is it this on? It's down, where is it at? It's down here, right? The building of the interna International Plaza has a long and rich history. If there's one thing that I know, it's that it's very important for us to tell our story. So in order to make sure the history of making of this community marketplace is never lost, this beautiful bronze plaque 
will hang permanently within this space to tell the story in both English and in Spanish so that the history of how it came to be will never be forgotten. On three, one, two, three. <laughs> And it reads, de la plaza, de la, de la plaza, la, la placita <laughs> becomes La Plaza International. Almost 30 years ago, the concept of creating La Placita in Northeast Rochester was conceived. It would be a plaza where residents could gather and celebrate the diversity, culture, and tremendous assets of this historical melting pot. A welcoming place with eateries and small shops that would allow neighbors to come together and interact with one another. As various ideas were considered over the years, the key planners changed as did the potential location, but the vision and the visionaries remained the same, and the dream was never abandoned. In 2015, local residents and the Community Design Center, with the support and leadership from Ibero-American Development Corp, came together to create a community-led vision plan for El Camino and the Northeast Community Avenue corridor, corridor. A key component of this plan revived, refined, and redeveloped. The original concept of La Placita into the Plaza International, Mayor Lovely Warren committed to bringing this community vision to fruition and turning this decades-long dream into reality. In October 2020, this beautiful community plaza was completed and dedicated thanks to the 2.5 million investment by the City of Rochester and other founders, including Rochester Urban Renewal Funding Agency, Rochester Gas and Electric, and the funds from the 2017 Federal Community Block Grant. The plaza is a major first step toward the shared vision of a thriving vital center of commerce and community in Northeast Rochester, where entrepreneurs and existing businesses can locate and sell products and services at low cost. These activities will add to the vitality and economic strength of this area, transforming it into a destination that invites the greater Rochester community to come together and celebrate the unique and special characteristics of the neighborhood. At the opening ceremony, community leaders, Eugenio Marlin, Executive Vice President of Ibero-American Development Corp, Gladys Santiago, former President of the Rochester City Council, and late Father Tracy, spiritual leader of the Northeast Neighborhood and staunch advocate for the Latino community. Vision and never living support for La Plaza International in Northeast Rochester. Have a merry Christmas in Rochester, please. Thank you all for coming. 